Hey there, financial wizards and aspiring investors. Today, we're diving into a topic that's going to bring your stocks research game to a whole new level. So get ready to unlock the vault of stock market secrets right here in Excel. I'm going to reveal some little known features that will turn your spreadsheet into a powerhouse of insights. Here, we'll demystify Excel's hidden gems for stock research without overwhelming you with too much technical jargon. Ready to go? Let's get to it. To get information on stocks, there is a command called stock history and it's only available in the microsoft 365 subscription so if you don't have that you probably need to get that because it dynamically goes out there to a third party provider called refinitiv to get that data so let's see how it works i'm going to use microsoft ticker symbol msft got a start date here and end date here and it's really simple formula when you think about it it's just stock history i'll press, press tab to complete that stock we want i'll just use that one and the second argument is the start date and those are the only two things you really need to put that in there. And why does it say value there? Well, my first start date is New Year's Day. So if I change that to one, two, then it might work. So you just gotta be aware that your start date's gotta be on a trading date, Monday to Friday usually. Now this doesn't give you much because you don't know where the stock ticker symbol really is if you just had this data table here. So there are other arguments that we can add to it. So let's bring up the window to show us what other fields that we have available to us. Now we have our end date here. And let's put the end date here for 6-1 and our interval. And that's going to indicate, do we want daily prices, weekly prices, monthly prices? I'll stick with daily for now. That's the default. And the header information is, what do you want to show for the header fields? By default, it's 1, so it shows the column header. But let's see what happens when we put 2. It's going to give us a little bit more information about what it is. And so it's going to give us the market identifier. This is on NASDAQ. X-N-A-S stands for NASDAQ colon, and then the ticker symbol price. Now there's probably other headers that you want in addition to the date and close. And let's go back into here. But you can see that there are only these fields available. So without going through this window here, what I can do is go into the formula bar, delete it, my closing parentheses, and we're on the header here where we identify number two. If I put a comma here, it gives you a range of other choices. These other properties, properties one, two, three, four, five, and it'll give you the date, close price, open, high, low, and volume. Let's put that all in there, zero, comma, one, comma, two, comma, three, comma, four, comma, five. And you can see all the other information that you're gonna get when you put in those properties. And usually with a table, you kind of like to see the chart. So I'm gonna make a chart out of this, control, shift, down, arrow. Let me go back up because it's gonna put my chart down at the bottom. Let's put go back up here, go to insert and line chart. You usually see a line chart when you're looking at stocks. And, and it's pretty detailed here, but let's say we wanna see just by, by month. I'm going to go back into the formula here. The formula is up here in cell B7. Click on the FX, the function to bring it up the window. And it just makes it easier to see. If I wanted to have it on weekly and monthly, I just need to change the interval. And let's change this to month. It'll make it easier to see in this example. Press number two, click OK. And now we've got our monthly settings here. If we wanted to make our chart more interactive, let me change the title here to reflect the stock ticker symbol. Click on my title to activate it. Go into the formula bar, type equals. And then I'll reference the symbol here. Click OK, press Enter, and it shows up there. So now this is dynamic. If I didn't want it Microsoft, I wanted Google, maybe type G-O-O-G, that's the ticker symbol for Google, press Enter. It's going to go out to the internet and reflect that data there. So this is good and dandy for one stock. Let's say that you had a couple stocks in your portfolio you wanted to kind of research and take a look at. You can create something like this, and this is using a data type feature within Microsoft. And in this particular example, let's say I have a portfolio of three stocks. I want to select my stocks. I have Microsoft here, everything changed here in the table, and also the graph here. If I change it to Apple, that changes it too. And so it's going to go out to the internet and check it out. So let's see how we can build something like this. So let's start fresh. And let's say I want to build it out, what I had earlier. Let's make my start date the same, 1-2-2020. And we'll make the end date, let's say June again, June something, 6-30-2020. Press enter. And I'm going to build out my table here where it's going to use the stock data types. Let's just type Apple. And then Apple will be Apple Computers. And all I need to do here is go under data. And under the data types, there is this stock data type. Click on that. And it's going to go out to the internet and try to figure out which Apple do you want. So it sounds really nice. And it gives you a data selector. So there's Apple Incorporated on the NASDAQ. They have it on the Brazil Stock Exchange too, but the one that we want will be on the NASDAQ. So I'm going to click that. 
it'll go and give you more details. This is the one I want, so I'm gonna select it, and it's gonna pull that information in, and it's gonna change what I inputted in there into that data type. Now, what you also notice now, there's just a little nice icon here that's gonna give you some information where you can insert data. So if I click on that, we've got all this other data about the Apple stock. So let's say I wanna know what the industry is, I also want to know the market cap. Let's try market cap. I think it's down here near the bottom. Click on that. And let's do ticker symbol. We'll just do a couple here. Ticker symbol, we're gonna put that here for here. And unfortunately, this doesn't put headers here like the stock history does. So I'll put headers here. Company, and then industry, and then market cap, and then ticker. One pro tip here is to turn this into tables because if I want to have other stocks in here, I don't want to type the same things over again. Select my range of cells here, control T. Do I want to create a table? Click OK. So now what I can do is I can press tab. What other company do I want? It's going to automatically fill this out here with this information on the company that I put in there. Maybe I'll put another company. Let's put Tesla. Tesla. Press enter. That didn't pick it up, but what we can do is still go under data, go to stocks. Let's see if it picks up Tesla. It didn't in that instance. Maybe we need to type in Tesla capital, Tesla. And let's see if it picks it up there. And it gave us the data selector. I'm gonna select this one and it's gonna pull that one in and it's got Tesla. Let's do one more. And I'll press tab. Let's do Google again. G-O-O-G-L-E, press enter and it picked up alphabet. And so I have my ticker symbols here. So what I can do now is I can make a little drop down list. How do we do that? We're gonna use a data validation feature. That's gonna be under data, data validation. Click on that, and what we wanna do is we wanna do a list. And what is my list? My list is these values here. So my source is gonna be here. Once it picks that up, click OK. And when I click my drop-down arrow, it will pick it up. Now what this is gonna do is it's gonna be an input into my stock history table. So I'm gonna press stock history, and the stock I want is that one. Start date, there comma, end date, there, my intervals, let's do this, let's make it easy, let's make it monthly, comma, and then we want to show all our, our header information, comma, and let's show all these properties, zero, one, two, three, four, five, close parentheses, press enter, and it's going to pick all that up. And usually with stock information, it's better visualized with a chart, so I'm going to go select my data here, go under insert, chart, insert a line chart, do the same thing I did earlier, click on the title here, press equal, let's pull in the, the ticker symbol here, press enter, and now you've got that. Now the beauty of this is now I can just change the drop down here, let's say I want Google, that updates. You can see the table updates and also the chart updates. So if you had a portfolio that you wanted to look at, you can use the stock history function here and also use the data type feature with the stock data type to help you do this. But in addition to stocks, did you know it can also do currency? I'll lightly cover currency, and basically what currency does is it'll help you convert from one currency to another. So let's say, for example, we have uh, the Japanese currency, JPY. If I press enter here, and I go under currency, it's going to kind of look for the currency that we want to convert from to. So that's why I have from to here. So you can see Excel is kind of helpful here where it's giving us the data selector and giving us some values to choose from. I'm gonna select that one and it's gonna bring that one in. Now you've got our familiar little tip here where we can insert data. And usually what we wanna do is we wanna get the price, right? We wanna get the price. We wanna get the, maybe we'll put in the name too. So it gives us a full name of it. And then let's get the ticker symbol. And I'll show you why that might be useful here. Let's select my columns here to auto fit because it's chopped off some of the lettering here. Let's auto fit that. And I'll give it some titles here too. So we'll do price, we'll do name. And then we're going to do ticker. And now that we've got ticker here, we can use it in our stock history function to get some information about that. Let's say we've got our stock ticker symbol, comma, our start date. If we want to put the start date within the formula itself and not reference another cell, you have to put it in uh, quotes. So I'll put 1, 2, 2020, close quote, end date, quote, 6-1-2020, close quote, comma, interval, let's do this monthly. And then comma, uh, let's show the header information. Let's show the header. Let's show the identifier and header to comma. And we have our properties. I'll, I'll put all the properties in zero, comma, one, two, three, four, five. And you see five is not really needed here, but let's just show you what happens. Because five, we're not really talking about volume when it comes to currencies. I'm gonna remove that now. 
close parentheses, press enter. And you can see there's not much values changing here because of the way the currency is converted. So let's try US dollars to Japanese yen. So it's going to be USD slash JPY. And again, it's probably better to have this in the table. So I'm going to take that and convert it to table. Control T. I'll click OK. Now it's converted to a table. I've got to change this data type. Go back to data. Go back to currencies. And it's going to select that. And I'm just going to pull this down here now. Because if you see here, it's actually just a formula. If I click on here, it's this value with the price argument. And this one's got the name argument. And this one's got the ticker symbol. So I, all I need to do is just pull it down because like any other formula. And it's going to copy and paste it there. That's got the hash marks because there's not enough room here. Double click to auto fit that. And if I change this to reflect instead of D4 Japanese to USD conversion, let's do USD to Japanese conversion or yen conversion. And it went out to the internet to go and get this data. So if you're interested in tracking currencies, this is the way you can do it in Excel. And there you have it. We just scratched the surface of Excel's hidden treasures for stock research. If you found this video helpful and you're hungry for more insights, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and share it with your fellow investors. Until next time, Happy investing.